All right, so we're gonna look at how we can apply a nice meandering pathway that has some variation in its width um, and have basically the landform respond to it. So in this process, it's about prioritizing your pathway of how that's going to <clears throat> traverse the landscape and then having the landforms themselves pretty much kind of extrude around it. And you can see that We've got these really nice kind of soft, uh, rounded landforms. I'll show you throughout the uh, tutorial as well some of the different kind of uh, elements or characteristic changes that we have in this. So uh, that's what the focus will be for this. So this is, again, the end product that I'm showing. It's not that uh, challenging. You can see there's this part where we actually create the pathway itself. This is what gives it those kind of undulations or those wider portions um, and then we're basically taking that surface and its relationship or proximity to this path and starting to create basically these kind of profile curves in that case and like I said this is where we get to dictate um, the profile of our landforms uh, using this graph mapper then it gets reconstructed shows the contours so that again we maintain um, a certain uh, accessibility for it. So again, let's just go ahead and jump in. So one of the first things uh, to do is to actually look at your surface and determine whether it all fits within uh, that walkability parameters of um, if you're going to do any type of path or trail on a surface that in order to avoid having to add landings, you need to be able to maintain a slope anywhere between 0 and 5%. If you're somewhere between 5 and 8%, then you have to start to include landings. Uh, and that just makes it a little more uh, challenging. It's not to say it can't be done, but this kind of creates a much more universal um, access. And as you can see, this is using a script that's been uh, generated from a previous video where we're just basically taking an existing surface and uh, so you can see what it looks like. Basically it's a very very subtle gradual slope. Um, it really doesn't matter. Well you'll see what happens if there's a lot more undulation but if you want to just start with a pretty much flat surface um, we can use this just to determine and make sure that we're sticking within that zero to five percent range so you can see that that's how this uh, color uh, gradient has been adjusted where I have this green from zero to five which is yellow then five to eight is red or it has this more of that orange tone in between and then everything after that is uh, beyond those slope constraints so what's great about this is that we can actually uh, put our path in any kind of orientation and not have to worry about um, exceeding that slow percent. So that's one of the benefits of just kind of assessing your site first and then going from there. So let's go ahead and uh, start brand new. So again, I'll, let's just turn it on. So here's the actual surface itself. Again, very flat. And then I've got this center line curve that's meandering throughout the space. So you can really just kind of create that however you want. Um, you can have multiple curves, which could be kind of cool. Maybe I'll keep this one here to kind of add to it. Um, we'll see, I don't know. Um, I've also actually, uh, let's go ahead and project this down and move it vertically in order to have the script work nicely we want to make sure that we actually move that center line above the surface um, it really doesn't matter um, right away but you'll see when we have to make sure that that's happening um, so yeah that's all you have to do in terms of creating that pathway for now I'm gonna stick with just the single curve, I'll hide this one for now. Maybe we'll see if we can get it to even integrate at the very end. Um, so let's go ahead and reference our curve here. So 
So I'm going to set one curve. And from here, this is where we start to uh, get that different kind of undulation as well. So that has some variation in the width. And a lot of this is from a previous video that's been created. So you can obviously adapt some of those other um, lessons to this as well. But again, I'm just going to kind of start from scratch. It's not that big of a deal. So I'll go to curve, divide the curve. For this, it really doesn't matter how far these points are. So I can just use a simple division instead of finding it by a length. And I do want to use a substantial amount of points as well. So even something probably beyond 50. Let's get up to like 100. Um, this is a pretty small site as well. It's only 100 feet by 100 feet. Um, so from here, what's great about it is it gives us these parameters. With these parameters, I can start to uh, determine the horizontal frame. And that's going to help us determine where to move these points for those variation in width. And you can see the directions perpendicular to our path are the screen axis, which is the Y axis. So now I can take my horizontal frame here, deconstruct it, and now I can use my Y axis or that green line direction to dictate to move those points, right? Because we want to make sure that those points are always moving in that perpendicular direction. So I can go ahead and turn this off. And here's where, where we're going to start to give uh, some variation. And we'll use two different graph mappers for that as well. And so in order to get that to work, we're going to go to parameters, input. And like I said, we're going to use our graph mapper. We have to first kind of uh, determining, determine how many uh, points we're going to use. So again, there's 50 in there. So we just want to make sure that we use our, in this case, the range will be fine. I can just use whatever the same number of division um, into the end value here. So you'll see that, um, excuse me, we're getting 101 points. We're getting 101 values, so perfect. The good thing is that those uh, numbers are matching. So I'll drag this into here now. Go to Graph Mapper, and I will choose, in this case, I like to use the Gaussian curve to kind of, again, uh, really make some kind of uh, um, dominant kind of... Uh, extrusions out of this. So from here, I'm also going to add a multiplier so that I can kind of change it that way instead of having to go into here, change the y values. It's just a little bit easier this way. So I'm going to go to math, multiply, and do something between like 1 and uh, 15. So the next thing we want to do again, we want to move these points, which are here, in this direction by this amount. So I'm going to go, I'm going to type move. Again, I'm moving those points. I want to use this in combination with that. So in order to do that, I need to go to vector, vector, amplitude. So it's asking for the vector, which is this. It's also asking for an amplitude or a strength. So I'm going to put that into there, drag this into there. You can see right now it's not doing a whole bunch. So I can push that up there. I probably don't want it to go from 0 to 1. Let's have it go from 1 to 2. So it doesn't matter what I multiply it by if it's always at 0. So there you go. So now we can see what that looks like. And this, we can start to move around to determine where do I want that part to really kind of extrude out. I kind of like it extruding out over in that direction. So maybe again, I'll kind of give it a little more emphasis that way. It looks kind of cool. And let's just do it by three. So that way the narrowest part is going out three uh, feet. And then that area is going way off the screen. 
what I want. I'm just going to kind of adjust it too so it's a little more tapered. But that looks good. So now what's great is I can basically apply the same process of using this uh, graph mapper and amplitude. So I'm going to take these parts, just the stuff, and oops, copy, so control C, control V. Again, we're using the same geometry, same direction. The only thing that's different is that we want it to go in the opposite direction. So I can just go to vector, reverse, and now you'll see that it's going in that direction. And again, I want to kind of create one that's a little bit different, maybe on this part, maybe it's not nearly as profound. Maybe it's more on that subtle side, All right? So I can turn off of that. So, so there's this one, there's that one, and then there's this guy. So there you go. So now we can start to see that we've got some nice variation to it. I can always kind of emphasize some areas a little bit more than others. All right, that's kind of cool too. Um, so yeah, there's our new kind of undulating curve. Obviously, you can all use all sorts of different graph mappers if you want there to be a lot more kind of undulation. It's fun to use this Perlin one as well. Uh, you can have a lot more of these kind of undulations that way. You want to really kind of emphasize them that way, but it gets a little, it's a little bit hard to see some of them, but it's not until that that you can really start to see it. But uh, let's go back to our Gaussian one. And let's decrease that back to three. That looks good. Okay. So now we can start to apply that to the actual surface itself. So the next thing I want to do, and this is why I, again, drew this above the surface, because I want to project these points onto my surface. So I'm going to drag those into there, and then I'm going to hold shift to also drag that onto there. And now I can start to reference my surface here. So one surface, drag that into the geometry, I can turn this off, and I'll turn these off as well. Let's deselect that so we can see it. What's nice is that it does trim it um, off when it goes off that side. So I would definitely recommend drawing your center line um, beyond the extents of your surface, and you'll see in a minute why. Uh, that way, again, it kind of actually uh, bleeds off of it. And so the next thing we want to do is use this um, line of points to actually create a curve so that we can start to manipulate the points that we're going to create from the surface as well. So one nice trick to basically, I've used these other old techniques where you have to create a curve from each one of those and then you have to connect them at the end. However, there is a nice new trick to kind of reduce the number of components you have to use. So I'm going to go to Curve, and I'm going to interpolate this. And immediately, if I turn this off, you're going to see that it's kind of actually taking the endpoint of one and going to the other, uh, but that's not a huge deal. What I can do is basically say, you know what, instead of drawing it in that direction, I'm just going to reverse the order of points. So I'm just going to right click, hit reverse. This will take a second, so it's going to close it there. So it's understanding that I'm taking these points, closing it there, and returning. And then we still have that gap over here. But all I have to do now with that is go to periodic, right click, set boolean to true. So now we've got our nice closed uh, curve on the surface. And don't worry too much about it not kind of going to the end. It'll still work nicely. Um, the other thing too, just kind of best practices, whenever you're kind of focusing in and zooming on this, is that I know that the composition itself I'm going to show 
is going to be a much smaller window. But I want to give myself some buffer on the edges so that way um, I can always kind of trim or crop it and not have to worry about having to actually go through this whole process of remodeling it or extending it that way. It's always good to kind of work in an area that's um, larger than what you intend to be this composition. So now that we got that, I'm going to take my surface. And again, I like to kind of, in this case, actually I probably don't have to worry too much about them being a certain distance spacing. So I'm just going to simply go to surface, divide surface, and pick something or start somewhere around 50. So it's still going to give us a nice dense grid of points. I can always adjust that as I uh, progress as well. What's good about this too is that it is about 100 by 100 feet, so uh, this still comes out to about two foot spacing of points. Okay, so what I want to do now is basically only affect the grid of points outside of this pathway curve. So what I want to do is go to Curve, Analysis, and do Point in Curve. So I'm looking at this grid of points. I'll go ahead and flatten it. And then I'm using this curve to determine whether it's inside or out, right? So zero means it's outside, one is coincident, two is inside. So I basically just want to worry about the points that have a zero value. So I'm going to go ahead and take this Go to Math, Operations, Equality, oops, not Similarity. And basically, I just want to, again, focus on points that have that zero value. I don't even really care too much whether it's coincident or tangent or on that curve. So this, again, gives me my pattern of whether that's true or not. So I'll go to List or Set, List, Dispatch. The uh, list I'm looking at is my grid of points. I'm using this pattern to determine whether it's inside or out. So I'll turn it off since it's showing me both conditions. And then if I look at that, now I can see um, all the points that are outside of my curve. So from here, um, I'll actually begin to manipulate them. So I want to take these points and based off of their proximity to uh, these projected points, I'll start to do my landform. So I can go ahead and just get rid of this. That's just so you can kind of see it. So I'm going to go now to vector, closest point, and here's, I'm going to use the A for my cloud of points these projected points as the ones that determine distance and again I'm gonna take these distance values I'm gonna go ahead and remap them so it's easier to use the graph mapper for to create my profile I can use the min and max to figure out those uh, bounds I'll just stick with the default 0 to 1 now I'll go to Parameters, Input, Graph Mapper. And these are the values I'm going to jump in. So again, the way this is going to work is that the closer they are uh, is going to be one end of the axis. Again, I like to use the Bezier one. So I can start off by saying, you know what, maybe they don't just immediately jump up as they get, again, like this is proximity to this uh, edge of our pathway. Then as they get further away, they um, start to lift up in that case. So now I'm going to also use again my multiplication so I can just adjust it this way for the scaling of it. And in this case, I'm actually going to do something like negative 15 less than 0 less than 15. So I'm going to start off with something like maximum height of 5 feet. And now I can say move these, oops, 
Let's type move correctly first. So move, almost messed up again. So the points are these. And now I'm gonna use the Z value. Again, I wanna just move them vertically based off of this. And now we start to see how that begins to look. Again, it starts off subtle, um, the closer they are, but then um, as they get further away, uh, that's where we start to have more of that kind of change. If you want something more abrupt, I'm gonna hide this surface as well. We can start to kind of get it to look more like that and adjust this one to kind of have it look like what I showed earlier. So there's, now we're starting to get to that kind of grid of points. And if you want, you can even have it kind of intermittent. So maybe the high point is somewhere kind of in that middle distance and then it starts to kind of recede down. Or you can kind of have it start to go like that. It's kind of interesting ways to create these landforms uh, that way. So what I'll also do is now I want to again kind of create a surface um, using a combination of the existing ones or the ones that are haven't been touched which are in the inside of that pathway um, and replace the other ones on the outside with these new ones. So I'm gonna Go to sets, list, replace items. So this is our giant grid of points. We have our new points that we've just moved. And then we also need to know the index of those points that we've manipulated. And that's pretty easy. This first area where we use this dispatch to basically filter out the ones that are inside or sorry, outside that curve. We can go to list, item index. Again, we're looking at this master list. Now we're looking at these ones specifically and they're gonna give us all those index values. So now I can plug this into there. I don't have to worry about the other part. I can turn this all off. And now you can see that we've got all the points. And now from here we can actually create a surface from points. So I'll do surface, surface from points. Again, I've got my points. I know that this is gonna need a expression of X plus one. I've talked about this a lot of times in previous videos. And that's basically that um, this gives me spans or segments. I need number of points, which is you need 51 points to create 51 spans or segments. So that's why we just give that expression of X plus one. We can turn it off now and now we can start to see that actual surface. And again, it's kind of fun. You can always, again, kind of exaggerate it a little bit more to have something looking more like that. Like I said, you could have it more kind of subtle, like this is kind of interesting with this kind of hump there, you can do it like that. This is where we're starting to get to like that previous um, demonstration, right? It kind of looks very canyon-like, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can see that depending on the density of points, you can have uh, various levels of detail. Again, I'm not gonna mess with this too much because it does require a lot of thought of like determining whether it's in that curve or not. But you can see that you don't really have to worry too much about the density. Um, it's not gonna affect it a whole lot. Um, this again, like I said, it's not a huge deal that that kind of comes up. I'm already, I already know that I'll probably trim that away anyway, manually. Um, but yeah, so now we can start to see where are the parts that are closing that curve. I think it's here, yeah. That way I don't have to see that. So yeah, now we got this kind of canyon-like feel that the pathway is going through. Another approach you can do is maybe you want it the opposite direction. Maybe you want it so that the pathway is above uh, the landform. So you could actually have it kind of like that too. You can have it, again, very abruptly. So you just kind of have to think about this being upside down. Um, the other way to kind of manually do it is um, instead of having it in the negative direction, 
you can again always kind of do it like this as well which kind of creates this one's kind of interesting too it's almost like a uh, kind of a, a ridge that starts to kind of form around it but then it goes flat but if you want it to again uh, go in the negative direction you can do something like this and again you can make it really subtle you can make it abrupt it all kind of you have to just think of this as kind of being the an inverted version of that profile right so and another kind of trick you can see that um, even our pathway it starts so like even though that's the edge it starts to kind of go inside if you're really concerned with that you can always double click in here and change this x value to maybe just to start to influence them between like 0.2 let's try that that should start to expand that pathway much more right so that might be a little overkill so let's go back to here and say maybe 0.1 so basically it's saying you know what everything between 0 and 0.1 which is really close to the center line or these points don't touch them at all only once they get beyond that uh, start to touch them so that's a good way to kind of uh, filter that out as well but yeah now we've got in this case this kind of raised mound on our earthwork so another kind of cool way of just easily changing whether it's a negative or a positive value to create this pathway on it so you can almost think is it really a path or is it more of a waterway you can start to kind of do it like that um, so yeah, that's it for that. I'm going to show another variation where, again, it's going to be very similar to this, but it's just going to require, excuse me, a little more um, effort in Rhino. And I'll show that process and then very much kind of following of uh, this script pretty closely. So, yep, uh, that'll be it for that one.